molecular models in polarimetry. In this lab, you will be building models of molecules to reinforce concepts of molecular geometries and bonding. In addition, the stereochemistry of organic molecules will be introduced. One way to find molecular shape is through VSEPR, which stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. It is a model that takes a Lewis structure, develops the 3D electron domain geometry from it, leading to the molecular geometry. Its goal is to minimize repulsions between electrons. Therefore, using VSEPR, you can take the Lewis structure of a molecule, find the electron domain geometry, and then get the molecular shape. Another factor to take into account in making molecular models is polarity. Molecules may be polar or nonpolar, depending on whether the molecular geometry leads to the cancellation of individual bond dipoles. For example, in carbon dioxide, a linear molecule, the molecular geometry leads to a cancellation of the bond dipoles. Therefore, carbon dioxide is a nonpolar molecule. However, if we look at water, which is a bent molecule, the molecular geometry does not lead to the cancellation of the bond dipoles, so water is a polar molecule. Also important to molecular models is the concept of central atom hybridization. This is where the valence bond model of covalent bonding has the central atom using hybrid orbitals, which are formed from atomic orbitals by mixing different numbers of s, p, and d orbitals. The number of and type of hybrid orbitals are labeled according to what you mix. For example, if you mix one s and one p orbital, you get two s, p hybrid orbitals. Or if you mix one s and two p orbitals, you get three s, p, two hybrid orbitals. Orientations of the hybrid orbitals match the orientations of the electron domains. These hybrid orbitals are used by the central atom to bond to other atoms or for non-bonding pairs of electrons. So, once the electron domain geometry is known, the type of hybrid orbitals may be assigned. For example, if you have three electron domains, you know you have three sp2 hybridized orbitals. Another important concept is that of isomers. Isomers are any two compounds that have the same molecular formula, but are different molecules. There are several types, one of which are structural isomers, also known as constitutional isomers, which have different connectivity and therefore are not identical. Structural isomers have different physical and chemical properties, for example melting point and boiling point and the way they react in chemical reactions. For example, both butane and 2-methylpropane have the molecular formula C4H10. However, they have different bond connectivities, as you can see. This means they are structural isomers. Another type of isomer is a stereoisomer. Stereoisomers have the same bond connectivity, but different spatial arrangements. These are only possible if you have a stereogenic carbon, which is a carbon that must have four different substituents attached. There are two types of stereoisomers, enantiomers, which are non-superimposable mirror images, and diastereomers, which are not mirror images at all. We have different ways of classifying enantiomers and diastereomers. We must be able to classify stereoisomers in order to tell them apart. For enantiomers, we do this by determining absolute configurations. To do this, we assign priorities to groups. Priorities are based on the atomic number of the atoms bonded to the carbon. The higher the atomic number, the higher the priority. In the event of a tie, move on to the next atom and the next until a priority can be determined. For example, a COOH group bonded to a carbon has a higher priority than a CH3 group. Absolute configuration is then determined by orienting the lowest priority group away from you and determining the direction of the ordering of the low other groups from highest to lowest priority. If this direction is clockwise, we call the configuration R. If it is counterclockwise, we call it S. There is also a way to classify diastereomers about a CC double bond. To do this, assign priorities to the groups bonded to each carbon of the double bond. Again, priority is determined by atomic number. Once you have priorities determined, 
Then you see if the highest priority groups are on the same side or opposite sides of the double bond. If they are on the same side, we call it Z, for the German word zusammen, meaning together. If they are on opposite sides, we call it E, for the German word entgegen, meaning opposite. This last one is a structural isomer. As you can see, it has different bond connectivity. The second part of this lab is polarimetry. Polarimetry is another way of analyzing compounds and comes from the fact that different compounds rotate plane polarized light in different directions. In this lab, we will be using a Cross P1000 polarimeter to measure solutions of two optically active compounds, D-tartaric acid and L-tartaric acid. One of these is dextrorotatory, the other is levorotatory. This means they rotate plane polarized light in opposite directions. The polarimeter uses a Vernier scale. Dextrorotatory compounds rotate plane polarized light clockwise. As such, they are written with a positive. Levorotatory compounds, however, rotate with a minus. To place a sample in the polarimeter, first gently place one of the polarimeter tubes with the annular enlargement at the top, which is the bulbous part. Close the lid and then look through the eyepiece and adjust the instrument to set to optical zero, which we'll explain in the next slide, and read and record the measurement. Remove the tube and repeat with the other tube. In order to get a measurement, you must first find optical zero. To do this, look into the eyepiece once the tube is in the instrument. You should see one of the above images, either a black stripe in a light circle or a light line in a black circle. Rotate the instrument dial until the image flips, as so. Then rotate the dial back slightly until you get an image that is equally dark, so that everything is the same gray and no line can be seen. Now you have set the instrument to optical zero and you can take the measurement.